Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to unbox this big old package of parts that I got for making a protogen head. Uh, I don't have anything for the actual head frame itself yet, but this should be most of the electronics that I'm going to need, at least for the first version of it. Uh, all in here, including a little, some more tools and stuff that I'm going to need. So uh, last time we set up the basic stuff here on the workbench and tested the uh, power supply. And today we're going to dig in and uh, unpack this stuff and hopefully see what we can do with it in a reasonable amount of time tonight. Uh, since last time, the storage boxes that I mentioned that are going to go under the desk here have arrived. So I've got six of these and I can just put whatever components in them for storage that I need. And I'm actually going to get one of these component tray organizers out. So as I'm unpacking the shipping box, I can just store things away in there as needed. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. I haven't even opened this box yet. It arrived earlier today. Okay. Ah, invoice. So that looked like everything on the list. So let's dig right in and start actually removing stuff from the box here so we can see everything that we have. All right, so we have a little Ziploc with a bunch of stuff in it. Let's just set that to the side for right now. Uh, some more bags with components and stuff in them. We can go through all that later. Here's the third hand. I already had one, but I figured I'd get a new one. Just start everything over. Here is, nah, these are the RGB panels. And this must be the soldering iron. Where's the label on it? There is no, like, yeah, that's definitely the soldering iron. Oh, and what else is in here? Oh, the power supply for, whoop. Well, the box for the power supply. The power supply that I got for the LED panel, so I don't always have to use the bench power supply. And that is everything in the box. So let's start with unpacking the soldering iron, because that's going to go up here on the upper level of the desk. User manual, just put that to the side and look at it later. There's a lot of pieces parts in here. Is there anything under that padding? No. It is smaller than I thought it would be, but there's nothing wrong with that. So this one's an adjustable an adjustable um, soldering iron. I have a soldering iron, but it is not adjustable at all. Super cheap. So I figured I'd get a decent, nice one. See, it's got a nice adjuster for the temperature here. It has a readout. You can adjust, you know, switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Uh, we got here, we have a spool for holding um, solder, which looks like it needs a screwdriver to attach, so I'm going to grab a screwdriver. Okay. Wait, I have a place on my anti-static mat to put screws so they don't roll away. So, does it go this way? It must go that way because it's an offset from the body, so it'll actually fit on there. Put it on a nice flat surface to make sure that is level and at the appropriate height. Make sure that those are securely tightened on there. And R. Undo the twist tie for the power. God, that's really twisted on there. And then this must be the little holder bit that goes like <coughs> somewhere in here. Like this perhaps.
And there we go. Soldering iron. Nice looking soldering iron. That will just live up here on the top of the bench. Might as well go ahead and plug it in. Turn it on. Oh, there's a power switch on the top of it. Right, look at that. Set the temperature in degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit. So let's just set it to, I don't know, that for now and see how it warms up. Although I did take the tip protector off, so. Eh, I guess that's good enough for now. Probably should take that off. Oh, yeah, definitely got a little bit warm. That little piece of tip protector, but so nice soldering iron all set up. I will uh, where the little roll there it is the roll for the soldering wire holder. So nice. Let's go ahead and get the helping hand magnifier out of the box. be very handy when soldering tiny little finicky things. Right. And position it to hold something that you need to solder with the little clips and then position it so you can have the magnifying glass to see what you're doing a little easier. It's just going to rest up there for right now. Let's dive into bag labeled number one. Oh, oh yeah. Power supply for the LED uh, strips, for bench use at least. Right, so I don't have to use that power supply all the time. Just cool, whatever. This is what I'm going to start needing my little dividers. So here's that uh, other proto breadboard thing. So I have two of those now, two of them. Going to be very handy eventually, I'm sure. What do we have here? Oh, this is the OLED display. It's very tiny. Oh my God, super tiny. Oh good, I got those with headers to put on other connector. Oh god, look how tiny this thing is. That might be too small. I might need to get a bigger one. But um, yeah, this is a very nice little thing. It uh, can use uh, SPI or I squared C. I'm probably going to use it with I squared C. They don't need super fast update rate on it. Very handy. I'll probably solder these pin headers on here uh, eventually as well because because um, it has little tiny little connectors on the side here, but I don't have any of those. I didn't even get any of that go to wires, so I'm probably going to have to solder the pin headers here. I don't know if I'm going to want them on the front or on the back yet, so that's why I'm not going to do it yet. So in the meantime, let's just put this back in here. Uh, next, I just have a bunch of female pin headers that I'm going to need for probably at least on the teensy. Put any of these, or maybe even put some, well no, I think I want the male ones on there, but you know, these just go on the slots on the uh, circuit boards and they just you can plug stuff into them. So those are very handy to have. Put them in here as well. What is here? Oh, and then these are the capacitors that I got. So I'm just going to leave these in their anti-static bags for right now until I need to uh, assemble them onto the back of the panels. I probably only need one per panel. I got a total of four just to have. I'm not, I don't even need to start with them, but I think it's probably worth it in the long run to put them on the, uh, the panels to give them a bit smooth power supply and uh, not so much smooth power supply, but handle um, spikes in load that these panels might have. Uh, so that was that first bag. So let's go on to bag number two. Right here, this has the good stuff in it. So 
I got some little side snips. Okay, you're going to need to cut stuff. So, yeah. Very, uh, very handy cutters. Very handy cutters. No lock on them though, that's a little annoying to lock them closed so they don't unspring. Let's put those off to the side for right now. Uh, next I got a whole bunch of male pin headers to go with the female pin headers. Similarly, I'm going to need to be able to run a bunch of connections. Next, what is, what did I get? Oh, this is um, flux pen, right? Yeah, flux pen, because uh, I'm going to be doing some soldering, so needed to get some of that. I don't even know if I'm going to take this out of the bag right now. Uh, let's see, next, a whole bunch of breadboarding uh, wires. So they've got just little pins on the end that you can plug into a breadboard and plug into the other side to make your connections, or I would presume and kind of hoped that you could take these and they would also work nicely with these female pin headers and indeed they do. So, very handy, also going to leave these in their bag for right now. Uh, next is a bunch of female um, wires similar to those. Those are all male wires, these are female wires so I can run stuff between uh, boards as needed that have pin headers on them. Uh, this is a simple little single pole double throw switch, which means it can take one signal and switch it between two options. Basically it's a power switch. Really the only reason why I got it, at least I think I might have gotten two, I don't recall. But yeah, basically just use it as a power switch. Oh, no, I did get two. Nice. Uh, next, this is the little microphone. Wow, that's tiny. It's a little microphone. It's got some pin headers on it. It's um, got a built-in amplifier, I believe. Yeah, it's got a built-in amplifier. Next is a little uh, power adapter. It's got a female plug on it, like you would normally find on a vice, but it's also got some screw terminals on the other side. So I can, for instance, take this wall power adapter, plug it into here, and then have screw terminals that I can attach wires to that run off to wherever else and not have to cut a power adapter. Next is the breadboard. How do you open that? Like this? Yeah, there we go. So this is a very nice breadboard. It's got adhesive on it. It's got a metal strip for some reason. I'm not entirely sure what the point of that is. But it's just your run-of-the-mill breadboard so you can prototype your stuff before you eventually want to solder them onto those perma proto PCB things and then even eventually before you design your own PCB and get that made up. So this should be super handy for rapid prototyping. And lastly in this bag is the important part of the whole thing, a Teensy 4.1. So this is going to be at least for now, the brains of the operation. I kind of want to get a Raspberry Pi at some point because I can use full-on programming languages and talk to the internet and stuff from it. But those are literally on Obtainium right now, so this Teensy will have to do for now. And damn, that is really Teensy. I knew it was small, but I didn't realize it was that small. Let me slide it out of there. So this is a nice little uh, compute module. Uh, it's got a, I believe it's an 800 megahertz, maybe 600 megahertz ARM processor on it. As I recall, it's like a, a 6 or 800 megahertz 32-bit ARM processor, 1 meg of RAM, and 8 megs of program storage, of uh, flash. Also has an SD card slot, or micro SD card slot, and facilities to attach uh, spy attached RAM or, e or flash, EEPROM. So you can expand the storage and uh, memory capabilities of this if you need to. That can be a USB host. I don't think I'm going to need that. It also has built-in Ethernet, but I'm, I'm not going to use that. And a uh, micro USB port here for programming and uh, remote debugging and power. 
Uh, but other than that, it's got a shit ton of expansion ports and I, or pins, and I'm going to need that. And all of these pins have very good options of what they can do. So this little card that came with the Teensy gives a bunch of information about what all the different pins can do. And it has a lot of stuff in here. A bunch of them can do pulse width modulation. It's got like two or three different spy buses, a few different ice squared C buses, like eight serial ports. You can use them as digital pins or a bunch of them are analog. And yeah, it has a lot of stuff built in that it can do by itself. And which makes it very handy for um, driving this kind of stuff. So I believe all said and done, like this is just going to have hardware support for controlling all of these peripherals that I want to put on there and then some. So I should have absolutely no problems. <sighs> okay, bag number three. So the first thing in bag number three is this little freebie that I got for spending so much money in a single order. This is, what is it, a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. So it's basically a tiny little microcontroller board that uh, is nowhere near as powerful as the Teensy, but it has a bunch of RGB LEDs on it, a couple buttons, a bunch of little pads that you can just clip onto so you don't even have to solder. Uh, it also has at least I squared C. I don't know if it has spy. It has a serial port. It's very cool, I guess. It'll be it'll be nice for like messing around stuff. I think this also has yeah, this also has Bluetooth in it. So I don't know, maybe I'll find a reason to use this as well as like an auxiliary controller. Uh, if I can if the Bluetooth would be useful for something. I think it also has an accelerometer on it and a a temperature sensor and maybe a microphone so like I might not even need like if, if I could put this inside the head to like use as a bunch of different sensors and connect it all via serial that could be cool but that's down the road that I just got that because it was a free freebie like I couldn't even tell them don't send that to me if I wanted to but I didn't so this is another tip for the soldering iron one that it comes with is a very, very fine tip. This one's a bit more of a wedge shape. All right, next we have solder wick. Very useful for unsoldering something. All right, next. Oh, this is another freebie that got sent. It's a, I'm not entirely sure what it is. It says it's a KB2040. So this is a key bore driver, is what they call it. So that is just another thing to just put in the box of stuff that, you know, I'm probably not going to use, but hey, I have it. It's handy. Next is the light color IR proximity ingester sensor. So this is, this connects via I squared C, uh, and it just has a little sensor chip on it so you can, it can see if you're, you know, Woo woo, waving your hand or whatever in front of you, uh, and I'm probably going to use this for like uh, detecting if anybody is trying to boop you and react to that. All right, next I have 20 button switches. You know, just tiny little buttons, nothing special there. They go click. Uh, these should fit on the breadboard. Yes. Hopefully those make contact in there. And they would obviously work on like the proto boards later as well. But going to need to have some sort of a menu system to control settings on the fly. So buttons it is. Uh, we'll come back to that. Next is a USB to barrel jack. So if I want to provide power to the LED panels using that little jack that I got earlier, I can use the wall adapter or I can use 
USB and this is probably what I'm going to use on the go inside the head with a big USB battery bank to provide power to everything and um, the LED is running 5 volts the Teensy has a regulator to take 5 volts to make the voltages it needs so that is why I got this cable so I can easily switch between stationary and mobile use with the same kind of setup. I know I have this bench power supply but I'm ideally not going to use it a whole lot. And let's see, here is a bunch of 0.5 millimeter solder wire lead free. So this can just go on this little spool, spindle, whatever you want to call it, and then go right next to the soldering iron. Now the last things, um, there's this little thing I skipped earlier. This is a TNC4 Smart LED Shield. Not entirely sure if I'm going to need this, but it should make cooking stuff up easier. So basically what this does is it has a bunch of pin receptacles. Um, if you put pin headers on your Teensy, you can then attach this to it. I don't know, I might have to read the instructions on this to figure out how I'm, what I'm supposed to do with all these. But it just goes on, uh, slides on top of the Teensy, provides a way to hook up to these panels. Yeah, that's definitely going to need some looking at to validate exactly how to use it. But it should, in theory, make it a little easier to use these LED boards. But uh, we'll, we'll figure that out. And then the last piece is here, the LED boards. They come with a little cable so you can tie them together. They come with power cables that are chunky because uh, these things use a lot of power. And the LED board itself. And I sure hope these are the right size. I'm pretty sure they are. Put these on the inside of the head and there you go. So these things can daisy chain together. Let me get the other one out. So these are basically self-contained units. You give them data and they'll display. Uh, and they're designed in such a way that... Uh, oops, like this. So if I plug into the output port of one, and then the input port of the other one, then I only have to plug a controller into the input port of this one, and both of these will be able to be controlled like that. Not sure why these power adapters have two plugs on them. Are they intended to be used for two things? Like. I plug this in here. And this in here, and I provide 5 volts to this. Is that sufficient? Is that all I have to do? Uh, these don't work with uh, directly work with what I have here. Well, the good news is about having two of these is I can cut one of them and shouldn't have a problem. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put my little cutters. That definitely is too tight. And that is the biggest hole on these wire strippers. Well, that's annoying. I just have to do it the old-fashioned way. Don't do this at home. Well, that was a bit of a pain. I guess I need to get wire strippers that can strip a little bit thicker wire. I'll take this doodad. Driver small enough. It is. I'm going to need a better long term solution for this, for sure. 
Honestly, I didn't even need to do this. I have a bench power supply I can just clip to. But, oh well. Did it now, so yeah, there's this thing. Oh, that stuff, yeah, that didn't even hold on there. So, uh, definitely need to spend some more time thinking about how I'm going to properly connect that in the future. But for now, I'll just remove these and use the ones with the spade clips on it. Because I can just, yeah. Worry about that one later. Use this one for now. Powers connected to these. Uh, obviously, no data yet. I don't have anything set up that can do the data. But for right now, make these panels. They should be properly set to just do nothing. Like they should turn on, and I would imagine literally do nothing. Uh, make sure that these wires don't touch. Uh, that guy. So 5 volt, uh, these are going to need a little bit more power. At least when they get fully up to doing stuff. Let's turn it on. Yeah. As I expected, literally nothing. But they are drawing 130 milliamps just sitting here doing nothing. So they are working, but since they're not being told to do anything, they're doing nothing. So let's just go ahead and turn the power off to them for right now. And set them to the side of here because that's probably going to be the next thing that I work on. However, this video is probably going on long enough. So I'm going to wrap up this video here. Uh, so I hope that was somewhat interesting, seeing everything getting unpacked here. Uh, very soon, I'm going to have another video where I actually start trying to use some of this stuff, because I'm going to be doing that immediately after I'm done recording this video. So hopefully it won't take too much longer to get that out. Um, if you enjoyed this, maybe hit that subscribe button, leave a, leave a like, comment, I don't know, algorithm stuff. Stick around, check some of this other stuff out. I'm going to hopefully be able to get to writing code for this very soon, hopefully sometime this weekend. But for now, thanks for watching.